fucking sacrifices I made for you. Don't you ever tell me I'm selfish. Don't you do it. And you know what? You gonna pay for that. Me selfish. Okay. On my graduation. Okay. Me selfish. On my graduation. Yes. You gonna tell me all this shit I did for you, Jamira? That, that I'm selfish. What you did okay. was selfish. Okay. So I've seen this video on Twitter, and I'm not going to lie. I would love to interview the young lady because I want to know what happened prior to the camera being on. Like, what did you say to your mother to make her explode like that? Because she had to have said something to trigger her mother, and I want to know what it was. I had a conversation with my homeboy the other day, and he was basically telling me how there are pretty girls who go out of their way to befriend girls that they don't think are as attractive Facts. as they are. And you know what? I really cannot relate. Because all my bitches is fine. And when I say all my girls is fine, I really believe in, in my heart of hearts that all of my girlfriends are beautiful people. <laughs> and my guy friends be like, ah, oh, this one, this one, this one. No, all my bitches pretty. All of them. From since I was in elementary school, I've noticed that when you have a group of females that hang around each other, there's one leader. Usually the leader is the one that's the most attractive, the one that most men find attractive. She's the magnet that bring guys towards the friend group. Elementary school, junior high school, high school, college, and even now as a grown man, you know, because some of these friendships have matured into adulthood. Some of these women are only friends with these other young ladies because it's a confidence booster. Have you ever been outside and seen a young lady wearing some shit that she shouldn't be wearing? And in your mind, you wonder why her friend let her come out the house like that. She out there looking like an overfilled trash bag. Her friend know that standing next to her make her look way better. But don't sleep, ladies. Where things get crazy is that when the attractive girl out the group is not getting the attention that she feels as though she deserves, and now she start hating on her friend that she thought was an ugly duckling. I know it's about 25,000 of you guys that watch these videos that still haven't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Come on now, we almost at 100K, man. We almost at 100K. And follow me on the gram. Follow me on Instagram. How much money do you want your ideal man to make? Okay, so my plan is to make about $500,000 a year. And I want to make more than my man. I want to, like, make the money in the family. What about you? Um, I think also around, like, between, like, 450, 500,000K, I feel like... With the economy now, it's so shit. Economy, it's so Fellas, how do you feel about a woman making more money than you? Honestly, I know it's some men that don't care, and it's some men who, that's a problem. You don't feel like a protector if she's the one bringing in the bacon. Shit, it's gotta be a little bit better, but I don't need a millionaire. So how much would you settle for? I mean, a man can make however much he does, as long as I love him. So let's say he's making like 30K a year, you fine with that? Yeah, that's fine. So as long as like, I know what I want to make, so as long as I'm making what I want to make, that's fine. What about you? Yeah, I know. At the end of the day, it comes down to love. If you love the person and if you enjoy being with them, that doesn't, that's not the main factor of the relationship. Money shouldn't be your main factor. Never. Love should be. The only thing is, can they cook? But I mean, sure, you making $500,000 a year. We could hire a chef. I don't even care. Now, is even somebody going to snatch them up? But if they single in the next couple of years, these women are going to be somebody's sugar mama. Let's hope they find a husband. Me, particularly, I'd rather be the one bringing in the money. And I like I would like for my woman to bring in her money also. But the money she bring in, I feel as though she can use that for what she want to use it for. And when it comes to just taking care of that household... I'd rather be the one to do all that. One thing I'm going to say, as a man, whatever lifestyle you're living, make sure that you can afford that lifestyle if you and your woman are not together. A lot of times we have situations where two people get together and the lifestyle they're living is because of their combined income. And it shouldn't be like that because now, let's say y'all grew apart. The only thing keeping y'all together is because y'all can't afford to be single. Y'all ask me a lot, why do I do fart content? But here's the thing, I wouldn't even have any sort of spicy platform had it not been for farts because there was this one guy on snapchat who used to harass me over and over and over for pictures and videos and one day i just was like show me the funds and he sent me some money and he said can you spread them cheeks and let some air out oh my god oh my god
And I'm a lot of things, but a liar ain't one of them. So I did it, and it sold. And you'd be pretty surprised how many people want to see you break wind. Break wind and twerk, break wind and play with yourself. They just want to see you. They love to see it pucker too. But I still won't pretend to be your mother or your sister or your or anybody that you're related to, really. But I'll do that. Boy, the internet is a strange place. Throughout my time on the internet, I've seen videos of men allowing women to strap leashes on them and walk them out in public like dogs. I, I have came across some one strange um, event. I guess I can tell you how the story. When we turned 18, my friend's brother-in-law decided to take us to a strip club. But the strip clubs were not allowing us to get in. They said you got to be 21 or older. So he had to find a bar. We went to this bar. And it was basically our first experience of a strip club, but it wasn't quite a strip club. But something happened that particular night. It was this young lady in there. She was beautiful. And I guess like what they did was just carry conversations with people. I don't know if they gave lap dances. It was very uh, subpar. So, you know, we wasn't really trying to get no lap dances from the females. We were trying to see if we can get some liquor, right? But anyway, a uh, man came in there. Full men in black tux with his hat, and he, he whispered in the girl's ear, asked her to do something for him. Now, we're sitting here, he's sitting two stools away, takes his shirt off, well, he didn't take his shirt off, he just ripped his shirt open, exposing his chest, and he allowed the young lady to wring his... The young lady was there wringing his... And while she was wringing his... He was growling. He gave her, it looked like he gave her about $1,000. Put his shirt back on and walked out. She went to the bouncer or the owner. I'm not sure if it was the owner or the bouncer, but she went to somebody. And then she left for like 15, 20 minutes. It came back. She had a whole new outfit on. And she smelled like body wash, so I'm guessing she went to take a shower. I'm not gonna lie, she looked visibly disgusted, but she did what she had to do to make that money. So I was just minding my own business in the gym, you know, doing my thing. Somebody came up to me and said, I look like I dream in 4K. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, someone came up to me and said, I look like I can remember everything. <laughs> so tomorrow. <laughs> At some point in time, you got to let it go, fellas. I remember when I used to work at the mall, this is a guy that used to come in there. He worked at Macy's. My man's hairline, literally, his hairline literally ended back here. But what he used to do was get a haircut and fill the rest in with Beijing. You know what Beijing is? Beijing is the little hair follicle spray. He used to fill from the middle of his head to right above his eyebrows. And shape that shit up with the Beijing. Look, I, I really don't want to do this right now. Just please get out. I'm not doing too much. Don't fucking gaslight me and treat this like it's an overreaction. I, it doesn't matter that you asked beforehand if I wanted any food. It's about the fact that you even had to ask. You should know me well enough by now to know that the minute I saw that food in your hands, my mind was going to change and I was going to want some too. So don't... Yo, damn, y'all hear that thunder? Y'all hear that thunder outside? I feel as though every man in a relationship goes through this. You ask a girl if she wants some food, she's going to say no. You ask if she's hungry, she's going to say no. Then you go outside and you come back home and she either going to complain, damn, why didn't you give me no food? Or she's going to take half your food. Now, I don't know about y'all, but in like me, if I buy a bowl at Chipotle, and you know how big them bowls is, you know, they come, I'm expecting to eat that whole shit. I ain't trying to share with you. I don't want to share my drink with you. I don't want to share my water. Don't touch my goddamn chips because I asked you what you wanted to eat. Fucking tell me that I'm overreacting. Mm. You should have known. You should have got me something anyway. I'm having to come to the realization that... I'm practically a stranger to you. And on top of that, you're selfish, greedy, 
I asked for a few fries, a couple of bites of your sandwich, and you couldn't even give me that. Because he had his mind set on eating that. You know what? You're right. You are right. I said I wasn't hungry. Are we good? No, everything's fine. I'm good. You good? Great. Have fun on your game. Oh, Dweeb. Nerdy ass. Bro, why do y'all do this? Why do y'all do this? Just because of that, she gonna make the whole situation awkward. If you say you're not hungry, why am I going to buy food for you? And then you know y'all motherfuckers be so picky. Oh, I didn't want that. You should have bought this instead. But bitch, you said you wasn't hungry. Bro, mm, this, mm. Nah, now I'm just, this bringing back feelings. This bringing back feelings. This bringing back feelings, bro. Cause I'm married. This bringing back feelings. You know, many times I done asked the motherfucker if they want something to eat, and they say no. You know, how many times we done went to Chick Fil A, and she's sitting right next to me in the car, and I said, "Hey, babe, you want you want something? You want a fry or something?" No, I'm okay. I'm fine. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. I already ate. And then I buy myself and my son some fries, and we get in the house. I go to the bathroom and wash my hand, and I see I see this mother opening up the Polynesian sauce and dipping fries in there and drinking out my damn Sprite. Now y'all know Chick Fil A fries is big. It ain't a lot. Don't, don't sleep. It ain't a lot of fries in there because they big. They take up some space. So now I got to share my fries with you. And then you drinking my damn Sprite. Backwashing and shit. I'm 37. And it has been in my freezer for 37 years. And I was always told it was like a wedding cake top. Adam Smith had been living in this apartment, taking care of his mother who passed away from cancer just days ago. He showed us a photograph of a wrap box that was in his freezer. He said his mother kept it inside their freezer for decades and told him to stay away from it. He opened it after she passed away. There was a pink blanket, baby blanket, and when I, I reached down and touched it and I could feel a foot and I could see the baby's head with hair hair was still attached to it. He's distraught thinking about the possibility that that child may have been his sister and what his mother may have done. Preliminary testing led investigators to believe the child was wearing clothes made in the mid to late 1960s and that he was younger than one year old when he died. The baby was never legally named, police say. You just never know what people are capable of. I'm always out here protecting myself, you know, but at the same time, now that I have a son, I'm extra cautious. And I know my son is soon going to get to the age where he want to have play dates with other kids and, you know, sleepovers. I don't know if I'll be allowing my son to have any sleepovers with his friends. I can say, oh, I want to meet the parents. People can create a facade. It's just like a job interview. People can create a character that you might like. And you might feel comfortable and, and trust. But once they in the comfort of their own house and, and they have your child, you don't know what, what could happen. So I go on a date recently and this guy invites me to a fancy winery. Now, I love wine. I love wine. Um, but I, I like the sweet wine and I like the cheap wine because I don't want to spend that much money. That, that's I don't have to explain that. Anyways, so <laughs> we go and we're tasting this wine and we get into the red wines and he starts swirling it. I'm, I'm like watching him. I know he's classier than me. I could fucking tell as soon as I walked in. So I start, I'm, co I'm going to copy him, right? So I can look classy. And so I, I start swirling the wine, but I don't know how to swirl the wine. So I'm not doing it right. Um, and then I spilled a little. Uh, no biggie. I just brush it off. And, uh, and then I taste it. And uh, it's very bitter, and I'm like, mm, I don't, I don't really think this one's for me. I don't, I don't really like the, the bitter ones. And he's like, oh, he's like, I love this one. He's like, you gotta, you gotta bubble it over your tongue though. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. And he's like, you know, he's like, have you seen it? Have you seen Hannibal Lecter? And I'm like, 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have seen I have seen that show. And he goes, well, you just you know that sound that he makes where he goes, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. And he's like, yeah. Ah, yo, I'm not gonna lie. I can tell this is about to take a turn for the worse, bro. Cause she seems so awkward as hell already. He's like, you just do that with the wine, and and it bubbles over your tongue. And I'm like, yeah. I don't think I should do that. I don't think I, I, I don't think I should probably do that. And he's like, just try it. And I'm like, this is where it falls apart. Um, this is where, it was, and I knew it was going to. Um, so I do the Hannibal Lecter with the wine, and I <laughs> <laughs> I spit it uh, all over the table. Just a little little bit of wine drool also that fell straight on my shirt. No more classy guys. That's it. I love wine, but I don't like the the bitter wine. Like I like sweet wines. That's just me. I know everybody get wine and they get the bitter tasting one, and you know it's classy, like she said. And I'm not doing that shit. Give me some sweet wine, and I'm gonna turn up. God is so funny. Me and him always cracking jokes. Cause why am I sleep hearing the thunder and rain? And I'm like, bring it on, like, let it rain. This is not yeah, what I up. meant. <laughs> this is not what I meant. That's messed up. This is not what I meant. He's always cracking jokes with me. Damn, twin. My first baby is dumb for him. Mm. Damn. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. The thing about getting your car messed up like you know let's say you had a situation where a tree fall on your car or you get in a car accident when you live in a state where you need your car where you have to drive 30 miles to get to work that shit is life changing son huh? wow. why would she do that Lately, a lot of the clips I've been reacting to, people are actually, like, finding the people in these clips. Sometimes they'll hit me up on Instagram and say whether they liked the video or whether they disagreed with how I judged them in the video. In this particular situation, if any of y'all know who this young lady is, please tell her that she need to change her ways because she would do that to the wrong person and end up on the news. So, yeah, about that, um... I ain't gonna lie, but I don't think we're gonna be able to go out to eat no more. Why not? Because I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? My pockets is looking a little bit low right now. I had a lot of stuff to pay for, so I ain't got no money on me to take you out to eat. Don't worry, I mean, that's not a problem. We can go. We can still go. I got you. you know what I'm saying, though, but I don't, I don't have no money to pay for the food. I'm gonna pay for it, baby. You always pay for the food. Sure. Come on, let's go. You know what I'm saying, but I don't. I know want... you and me is hungry, babe. I wanna eat out today. Man, I ain't gonna lie, I really don't want you to be spending your money on me. Uh, I'd rather have me pay for it, but I don't want you to pay for it. Right now, so. You always do the treating. I'm gonna treat you, okay? It's no problem at all. Let's go. Let's go. Be ready. Yeah. I got you, babe. Alright, no, I'm just, I just wanna make sure. There's nothing wrong with me paying for our food. Just imagine if she paid for that food and came back home and gave that man the cheeks. Normalize taking your man out on a date and bringing him back home and uh, sending him to the shadow realm. Ladies, let's normalize that. And that right there is wifey material. She, she didn't throw a tantrum when this man said, babe, my pockets is looking funny. She said, oh, I got money. I don't even feel like cooking. I got money. I'll pay for both of us. Normalize that. Normalize that. I reacted to a video um, earlier today. Um, it's going to come out on the, the next episode. A uh, young lady got upset because this man wanted to take on a mini date to Starbucks. She said, I look like a Starbucks type of bitch. <laughs> 